Hey, I'm Jessica and here I'm here today on the second part of the East Lake Shore Trails. This is Baker Hollow Branch. It is 3.3 miles uh, one way, so a little over six and a half miles um, total if you're coming back to the parking lot. Um, this is a really fun trail. It's really well used. It's pretty clean. The parking lots are great. It's easy to get to. It's a pretty fun trail and if you like hiking along water, this is definitely the branch for you. Um, so let's get on it. Come on with me. This resurrection fern is a type of epiphyte, or a plant that grows on other plants, using them for support while getting their nutrients from the air or water. It gets its name resurrection because it can last long periods of time without water, and can lose up to 97% of its water during an extreme drought, but will unfurl back to life with the rain. Mizell Bluff is 833 feet above sea level, and from the bluff, you have excellent views of Teleco Dam off to the right, and also the Cumberland Mountains. This typical backyard bird is pretty common in the southeast, and is easily identified by its gray crest and plumage. They eat both insects and seeds, and can be seen here foraging for seeds in the pine cones. They are one of the few perching birds that hold seeds in their feet and hammer it open with their bill. The Carolina chickadee is a tough little bird that weighs less than half an ounce. They don't migrate, so they consume almost 20 times more food in the winter than in the summertime, and can gain and lose 10% of their body weight daily in the cold months. The belted kingfisher is a loud chatterbox that's easy to find and identify in almost any waterside habitat with their stocky shape and white collar. They need clear water to see their food and like to perch or hover above the water before diving headfirst in to catch small fish. Recent surveys have indicated a decline in populations spanning West Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, possibly due to a loss of nesting sites and disturbances during the breeding season. The largest heron in North America, the great blue heron is highly adaptable, thriving around all kinds of waters, from mangrove swamps all the way to southern Alaskan coasts, even in areas where the waters freeze. It's able to do this because its diet is so broad, consuming mostly aquatic animals, but also eating small rodents and water birds. They're very shy birds, so it's hard to get close to them before they take off.
Round-lobed hepatica is in the buttercup family. It is in the genus Anemone because it actually has colored sepals, which are the outer protective layer of a flower instead of petals. The leaves are very distinct with three rounded lobes and fine hairs. I was excited to find this blooming. It was in a perfectly sheltered spot on the side of the hill and started blooming early. Spotted or striped wintergreen is also known as Pipsisawa, which is derived from a Cree Native American word that refers to the diuretic properties of the leaves. The species is hermaphroditic, which means it has both male and female organs within the same flower.